at this point, the sound hole has been cut, the rosette has been installed, and the soundboard has been brought down to 2.5 millimeters. The next step is bracing the top. And we will be using the bracing pattern of a Martin Dreadnought guitar. This is some diagram or diagrams that show the bracing pattern along with instructions that have all of the dimensions and the steps to, uh, to, to make those braces. To help me with, to make them consistent, I made some templates and I'll use those of course to trace out on the wood, rough cut them and then bring those to final dimensions, mostly after they've been glued to the top. The wood that I'll be using is, there's some Sitka spruce stock and I've traced out the grain pattern. You can see it's just about up and down what's called quarter sawn. And that's, you want the, the braces to be, the, the grain to be running up and down because it gives it strength. And the bracing serves a couple of different purposes. It, it keeps the top firm and in place and doesn't collapse under all of the stress of the, the strings pulling against it, but it also helps with the tone. So you want the braces to be strong, but you also want them to be, you want to remove as much material as possible without affecting the strength of the braces. So that quarter sawn wood is really important. The way you lay out the, the bracing pattern is you lay your template on top of your wood, you line it up down your center lines, take a pencil and you come in here and you, you mark it. You do that all the way around, then you take the straight edge and you connect the lines. So the next step is milling up this wood, rough cutting, and then we'd start gluing. Even though an acoustic guitar is often called a flat top guitar, the top is actually, it actually has a slight uh, arch to it and that helps provide strength to the guitar. You probably cannot tell it from this angle, but this big round sanding paper is a dish. It's, it's a 30 foot radius dish, which is the same radius that the top would be. And these are, this is two braces that I've, I've cut, rough cut, and I've glued, or I've, I've taped them together so I'll get a uniform, um, the, the dimensions will be uniform. And what you do is you, I've, I've kind of rough cut the radius already. Then you put it on the dish and you can mark it with a pencil. And then you begin sanding. And it doesn't matter, since this is an X, I'm going to cross the guitar pretty much in the center. You can sand in either direction on the sandpaper. And you've got to be real careful because this is extremely aggressive, and I have cut knuckles up before. And you can see I've sanded some of the pencil mark, but not all of it. finished cutting the X brace to the rough shape and I've cut a lap joint in it. You can see and it fits over like so. Goes down and then you've got a, a brace that's flush on both both pieces is flush. Now I'll glue it up to the soundboard. So this is what's called a go-bar deck. I mentioned earlier that the top of a guitar has an arch on it. The 30-foot radius sanding dish is under that, and these bars, these little plastic bars, put downward pressure on the, on the braces. That's the way you glue these up. 
that's how you start to create that arch on the top of the guitar. It's almost like a mouse trap. If one of them springs loose, they all start going crazy. But it is the most effective way to glue down your, your braces. Do the same thing on the back. I just didn't have, I didn't video any of that, but it's the exact same. Yeah, look at it. It's the exact same technique. I finished gluing up all of the braces on the guitar. And you can see they're they're big and bulky. And I'm going to remove a lot of that material. I talked about that earlier. The idea is to keep the strength in the bracing, but remove as much mass as possible to help improve the tone without sacrificing the strength uh, that, that the top, to, to be able to withstand the stress that is put on the top of the guitar. Real quickly, each brace. This one up top is just a flat brace. It's called a tongue depressor. At least that's what I've always heard it called. This is a big brace here, the upper transverse brace. Yeah, it's glued to the guitar flat, whereas these braces down here, we talked about the, um, the sanding dish, the, the curved dish. These are glued in to that radius, but the, everything above the sound hole is glued flat. Um, you see there's also there's a hole there and that's so you can get an Allen wrench through the sound hole through there and into the neck where the truss rod will be. These are just little sound hole braces just to add a little strength around that sound hole. We've already talked about the X brace. There are four finger braces. There's two on, the, on this side and two on this side. And they help with the tone and also just provide some strength up here in this big vast area. Down here, these are two, they're called tone bars. And I will take a lot of material off of here. And as you tap, as you tone tap your guitar, you will hear um, the difference in the tone as you take material off of here. This is just a little patch. I'm going to, I'll take a chisel and I'll, I'll carve it down real Thin, but this is just to help support this glue joint right here. And this is the bridge plate. This is a piece of um, rosewood that's about three and a half millimeters thick. That's uh, when you drill the holes through the bridge where the strings are attached, this just gives it strength. The strings would rip right through this soft wood right here. Um, the next step is to start removing some of this material. I will use a chisel that I've just honed the edge, gotten it nice and sharp. I will use a, a block plane and I will also use some sanding blocks. This upper transverse brace is square and I want to round it over. So again, using the uh, block plane, I'm going to start, just start coming in at an angle and Begin the process of rounding it over.
all of the braces have been cut, shaped to the final dimensions and glued down. I've, uh, I've, I've cut the, uh, the, the little valleys and peaks in the, in the braces. I've also cut them to, uh, I filed them where they're pyramid shaped or po they're pointed at the top. And I've also come in here with a, uh, a rat tail file. And I carved this little channel right here. And that is so you can take an Allen wrench, come in through the sound hole, and get in here to the truss rod. This is not the same, and this is a, a, a much bigger Allen wrench than you would use with truss rod, but just for, for it to show why that's there. So next step is to final sanding. I will sand this down to, to a um, fine grit paper, get it nice and smooth, and then we will attach the top.